What's up everyone? My other post casing video was a huge hit. So I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. And it only took a little bit of work. Unlike the other video where I butt up the ends on the corners, here I actually miter the edges so it looks like one entire cedar block instead of cedar planks butted up to each other. It's pretty cool. You'll notice some other differences in this video that I got from the comment section of the previous video. So there's a lot of new stuff to learn in this one. Stay to the end so you don't miss any of it. Don't jump to conclusions or assumptions. There's some really important stuff that I've changed from this video from the other video. If that makes sense. Let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the wood to the correct height. My posts are 91 and a half inches tall and I'm going to be doing three posts. Each post requires four boards to go along all four sides. I'm going to cut four at the same time. My posts are about 91 and three quarter inches tall. So I'm gonna cut these boards to 91 and a half inches, which is a quarter inch shorter than my post. Therefore, I can raise these off the ground by a quarter inch, which is something that I saw quite a bit in my comments on my last video. You'll see why I'm making these boards shorter than the post a little bit later. It's something that came up in my comments on my other video quite a bit. done. Got some deer out today. Oh man, I wish I could zoom in further on this. Got that beautiful buck over here, a bunch of deer. By the way, this is a new project coming out, I don't know, in a few months. It's a barbecue pit on top of an old pickup truck and the pool noodle thing, lily pad won't be there, but this is going to be super awesome. Stay tuned. That's a good reminder tell you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel because we have a lot of awesome content coming out just like that. Possibly a brand new shed build with the sports court and all that stuff. So hit that subscribe button. You're gonna wish that you did. One thing that I know is a big no-no is I am hooking up to a baby extension cord here going to the outlet. I know this probably can't handle the load of this thing here but I don't have a choice. All my extension cords are on the job site. Uh, I'm not sure what'll happen but <laughs> I don't think it'll damage that. I think if anything, it just overheats this wire. Now this is the step that I did not do in the last video and that a lot of people asked me questions on. It was just a lot easier to not have to do this step. I didn't have this tool with me on the site and I was doing this all in one evening. But what I'm doing here is creating a 45 degree cut on the edge of this. So whenever I join the boards together, it'll have one seamless, I mean, there'll be one seam but it'll be one corner seam there that I can caulk up or, or just really leave alone, but it makes it a lot nicer and a more finished, really it looks like one entire post whenever you do it this way. And you'll see what I'm talking about as the corners come together. So I set my angle here to 45 degrees and I'm gonna go ahead and angle it to where I cut off a lot of the back side of the board. I like the rough side, the smooth side will be the side that's post facing. It'll be facing inside where you can't see it. So this is what I'm talking about here. I have my angle cut, my angle cut. And when I join them together, it's gonna make hopefully a pretty nice corner just like that. I think that's gonna look really good. Looks like one entire post, not four panels. My old camera here was used for the brunt of this dust mess.
everybody bought. You may have a pop card. Oh, that sounds after, so after, good. And you make the oranges and pop and and, and hot dog. That's awesome, buddy. Making your casing. Yep. They look real nice. Yeah, they do. What were your initial thoughts on the first time we cased the post at the other house? That they were stupid and a waste of money. And she said they were stupid and a waste of money. She didn't want to do it. Check out these stats. In all seriousness though, those were for a rental property and it kind of was a waste of time and a hundred dollars, or at least we initially thought, but then with the YouTube video success, and I'm sure it helped to get rented out faster because it is the prettiest house on that entire street. It's not a very good street. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm doing here is, so I have the three sides cased, which is all you need to wrap around the post. But since I am going to be transporting this over to that house an hour away, uh, I am going to put the fourth post here and temporarily tack it on with shorter nails. So that way this all just is all squared up by the time I get over there. And who knows how many days it's gonna be until I get there. So with the weather and all that, I just want this to be all squared up, shored up, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to tack it on with a few like one inch nails just to barely grab it on. And then I'll pop this board off when we get to the house so I can case around the post, which you'll see. I'm using one and a half inch nails to fasten these through. And I'm using the, I think it's one inch nails for my temporary board, which I'll come back with the one and a half inch ones later. And just like the other video, I'm still using the same Ryobi nail gun. This thing is fastened on baseboards, cedar posts, shutters, everything you could imagine. I love this tool and I'll have a link down in the description below. Slide the nails in there and uh, simple to use. Plug and play. Something else I'm gonna do here is plane these corners down because they're super sharp. You can sand it if you don't have a hand planer. Now they're pretty rounded. Again, a sander would do almost the same thing, which I'll still also maybe sand it a little bit. I do have a big gap here and I'll probably fill it with wood filler or clear caulking or something just to prevent water from getting back in there. All right, let me show you one more time. Glue the edge. Spread it around with your glue brush. Put your next board on. Flip it over and do it again. That wraps it up for me today. I've got the three posts case down there in this one here. I'm gonna take them over to the site, pop off the one side, wrap it around the post, put it all together. And I could stain it right now, but I'm gonna wait until I have it all hung up just so I know if I'm gonna be adding clear caulk or wood filler or you know the rest of the steps. God, I measured one of these posts a little bit shorter because I knew the measurement was a little bit 
shorter on this end. I'm gonna have to try to squeeze it in there anyway. <laughs> The last step I'm gonna do here is raise these up like that much, which is about a quarter inch. And that way as water hits this, it doesn't wick up the post. Um, this is really important to maintain the longevity and the integrity of this wood, even though it's cedar wood. Keeping it off of the ground will prevent water from wicking up. I'll put some carpenter pencils down. That's like the perfect height. And then I'm simply just gonna nail this wood into the post that it's cased around and that's it. You can always case this with like a skirt piece around here. So then you can fasten in screws here and then you case it with some more cedar, but I don't have enough wood and it's so expensive for even one of these planks. So I'm not gonna do that. And it looks really good just like this. By the way, I am putting my nails where all the knots are, and that just really hides the nail holes. Especially from a distance, it just looks like a knot. You can't even tell. I'm also limiting how many nails I'm putting on the weather or the sun facing side. These aren't quite galvanized, although I'm sealing this. And I'm putting more nails high up and more in the back. So that way water just doesn't deteriorate the metal nails. So this is what I use, the natural cedar tone transparent for the mailbox up there. But I think it turned out a little too orange to pair with the blue house. Now that looks really good with like a white house with the black shutters and so on. But this is blue and white and having orange here just wouldn't look right. So I'm going with this clear wood sealer and hopefully I haven't used this one before on cedar wood. Look, I'm using polyurethane clear coat for this kind of wood inside. We're gonna use this on these posts and hopefully it just keeps the same color I have here. Maybe just brightens it a little bit. We'll see what it looks like. So this is the foam roller that I typically use, but that's for like interior projects. For these rough cedar boards, I'm going to use this one, which is more for like decks and exterior woods. And let me get a close up there. You can see a lot more texture versus this very smooth versus this very smooth roller foam and some kind of like carpet. <laughs> I've already poured the Thompson water seal and it looks pretty clear, so that's a good start. <laughs> you gonna put that outside? Thanks for watching everybody. If you want to check out my older version of this where you don't need to do the miter cuts, go ahead and hit the link up here in the corner below or down in the description. Full transparency here, each plank for these posts costs about 20 bucks. So you need four for each post. That's about $80 a post, plus the clear coat, the stain, all the nails, all that stuff. So you're looking at maybe $100 a post in just materials alone, which is way more expensive than it was two or three years ago when I last did it but it still looks phenomenal. I think it completely changes the entire face of this house. So is it worth it? I think so. And maybe you could find this lumber a little cheaper somewhere else. I am using cedar here. Remember to like, share, subscribe. I will see you all on the next video. Thanks.